Welcome again uh, in the machines lab. Today we are going to perform yet another experiment on this dissectable machine system. And today we are going to design a four pole three phase synchronous motor and see the magnetic locking. We are aware that we have designed uh, uh, five or six machines on this dissectable machine that are already uploaded on the channel. And today we are designing this three phase synchronous motor that's four pole. So the various accessories which we, we will require in designing the synchronous motor are already here. I will be discussing them during the video. So let's uh, first try to start uh, to design the armature of that this, uh, this uh, synchronous motor. right? So as uh, we are going to design a four pole machine, the wiring arrangement will be uh, like this. As I have already mentioned in many videos that we have this 12 coil stator. Right now we are going to make this as the armature of the synchronous machine and the coil arrangement for the four pole machine will be like this. If we will start from the coil number two, right, as you can see the terminals are mentioned here, which is a coil number two mentioned, that means this terminal is start and this terminal is the end. So let's uh, start to design the R phase of this three phase four pole synchronous motor. So what we will do, this is the start terminal you can see, this is kept as such. After that what we will do, we will connect the end terminal of this winding, that's the coil number 2, leaving two coils as such, having 60 degree phase separate. That means coil number 3 and coil number 4 will be left as such, and we will connect the end terminal of this coil number 2 with the end terminal of this coil number 6. Right? After that, what we will do, we will connect the start terminal of this coil number 5. Once again, leaving two coils as such, that means coil number 6 and coil number 7 will be kept as such. We'll connect the start terminal of this with the start terminal of the coil number 8. Right? After that, what we will do, we will connect the end terminal of this coil number 8, leaving once again two coils as such. That's coil number 9 and coil, the coil number 10 will be left. We'll connect the end terminal of this coil number 8 with the end terminal of this coil number 11. Right, so what we have left is the start terminal of coil number 11. So, in this way, we have framed the R phase of this synchronous motor 3 phase. That means this will become north north for at any instant, and this will become the south south. So, this is at any instant time, this is the north pole, and this is the south pole for this R phase. And if this is north pole for at any instant. So this will be a south pole. This is the, the pole pair combination will be like this. North, north, south, south. Right? The similar procedure will be followed for other two phases. Say, so after that, if we are going to design the yellow phase, so we will start from coil number 3. So, this is coil number 3. The start will be kept, starting term will be kept as such. After that, we will have the end terminal of this coil number 3. So similarly, leaving two coils as such, coil number 4 and coil number 5 will be left as such. The end terminal of coil number 4 will go to the end terminal of coil number 6. Similarly, to that, what we will do, we will, after that, what we will do, we will connect the start terminal of this coil number 6 with the coil number 7 and 8 kept as such with the start of the coil number 9. Similarly, after that, what we will do, we will connect the end terminal of this coil number 9, leaving two coils as such, that's 10 and 11, as such, will go to coil number 12, in the end terminal of coil number 12, and what is left to us is the start terminal of this coil number, coil number 12. So, this way we have designed the yellow phase, you can see, the four pole pills, that's this north, north, and this the south, this south. So we have designed the yellow phase. Similarly, we can design the yellow phase. So starting from coil number four, yellow phase, okay. sorry, blue phase. Similarly. Similarly, we are going to design the third phase or the blue phase of this three phase synchronous motor starting from coil number, starting from coil number four. So the start terminal will be kept as such with the start terminal. After that, what we will do, the end terminal of this coil number four will go Leaving two coil size, that's five and six will be kept as such. It will go to the end terminal of coil number six. Okay, after that, the start terminal of coil number seven, that the start terminal of coil number seven will go to the coil number 
8 and 9 will be left kept as such it will go to the coil number 9 start terminal of coil number 9 sorry 10 because we have connected in coil number 7 8 and 9 will uh, are already connected uh, it will go to the start of coil number it will go to the start of coil number 10 after that what we will do the end terminal of coil number 10 will go to the start of coil number 1 sorry end of coil number 1 and the start of coil number one will be kept as such so this way we have designed the blue phase you can see the pole pair combination of this so this is one and the opposite phase of this is this south and this is one this is one pole the north pole and the south pole for this blue phase so we have <coughs> almost uh, designed the armature of this three phase synchronous motor and let's adjust the same in this frame this is the frame so let's try to adjust it so this way we have uh, designed the armature of this three phase four pole synchronous motor and you can see these are the three phases since we have connected this armature winding in star and this is the yellow phase this is the red phase and this is the blue phase and uh, you can see our neutral point is here here are phase yellow phase and we'll put there the uh, neutral point is inserted in this point A. So we will be energizing in this uh, winding by this three phase power supply. Right? So first of all, this way we have uh, adjusted this in the frame as well. Right? After that, uh, we require the, to design the field winding which is uh, mounted on this, which is mounted on this uh, shaft. You can see these are the four coils and their connections on this <coughs> slip rings are given like this you can see the starting point of one coil is given uh, uh, to the starting point of other coil similarly the end point of that coil is given to the end point of the adjacent coil in this way we have connected these you can see these four coils marked as uh, coil number three though so we have four these uh, four l3 coils marked on this uh, shaft which will uh, be we using as the field winding of this uh, uh, synchronous motor right and these connections are bring on this comm uh, commutator segments or you can see the slip rings right so the same will be adjusted now in this armature by this air gap okay after that what we will do we will first fix this we will so you can see we have fixed this and it must uh, move freely we must try this after that we will adjust it by connecting this screws on both the sides so this way we have almost connected the field winding mounted on this shaft of this synchronous motor right after that what we need to do since the synchronous motor as you know that it requires a uh, starting it does, is not a self starting machine and that starting is provided by this uh, <coughs> variable speed drive so we will connect this by using this flexible coupling we will couple first these two machines and using an NL key to fix the screw so this way we will couple this machine this is only just for the starting purpose once the magnetic locking you will see that when is the magnetic locking happens after that we can disassemble this mechanical input or you, you can we can um, uh, make the speed zero using this knob right so also we will lock it from this side so that it does not vibrate now you can see now we will make the connections here we have a variable three phase power supply from that we will energize this armature winding since a synchronous motor is a doubly excited machine so its armature is excited by a variable ac power supply so we will energize this armature of this synchronous motor by these three phases so r will go to the r y will go to the y and and since let's take this r phase via this armature to have track on the armature current so what we have done you can see we have connected this R phase Y R meter, right? And the yellow, yellow and blue are given directly, right? So this way we have energized this R meter, right? Now after that, what we have to do? We have to energize the field winding by a DC source. For that, first we have to connect these brush holders at the slip ring places, 
so this way I am connecting we have connected this brush holder in which we have this carbon brush place it at a position of its terminal similarly we will connect the another brush holder on another slippery and adjusting its screw <coughs> tightly and its terminal is bring at point H and you can see it's freely rotating right so levelizing this right so after that what we have to do we have to excite these two terminals that's the real terminals by a DC source so you can see I am having here a variable DC source so what I will do I will energize the field winding mounted on the shaft of the rotating part so you can see positive will go to say to the point F of this brush terminal similarly we will keep track on this field current for that we will connect DC ammeter so you can see this is the DC ammeter terminal will go here and another terminal will go to the another brush terminal you can see I'm connecting it to this point H so this way we will energize this field winding mounted on the shaft by changing this knob by increasing the current so uh, we will excite the rotor by this DC source and we will excite the armature winding by this three phase source so but as you know that the synchronous motor is not a self starting machine so first what we will do let's uh, I will <laughs> tell you the procedure we will first since this is a four pole machine what we will do when we will energize this machine by a three phase power supply obviously it will generate a rotating magnetic field right uh, since uh, we are exciting it by a 50 hertz frequency supply so it will generate a rotating magnetic field which will rotate at 1500 rpm, 1500 rpm so what we will do first we will first switch on this supply we will switch on this MCB and adjust the speed of this variable speed drive to 1500 rpm so you can see by turning this knob in clockwise direction so here it's almost on 15 it has a multiplying factor of 100 that means it's 1500 rpm you can similarly check that speed by using this echo generator almost it's 1500 rpm right after that what we will do we will excite we will excite this field winding by a variable DC source by taking its value to the rated field current that's 2.5 amps sorry 3 amps right after that since this is a doubly excited machine uh, I will energize the armature of this winding uh, by the three phase variable power supply so I am increasing the voltage and um, by increasing the voltage there will occur a point certain point while there will be a magnetic walking of this rotating magnetic field on the rotor and it will run at the synchronous speed irrespective of the load or field current now I will the energy you can see that this is the voltage I am applying across the armature and this is the current taken by the armature I'm increasing it you can see the field current has started levering its value so that means the magnetic walking has occurred so now what I will see I will de uh, I will I will I will I will reduce the speed you can see the machine will start it will not stop I am decoupling this speed drive but the I am turning off this speed drive but the machine is running constantly at 1500 rpm right because the shaft of this machine and this machine are coupled and you can see the speed from this techo generator it's almost 1500 rpm right also you can see if I am reducing the field current value 0 there is no effect on the speed it is running at the synchronous speed that's actually the principle of synchronous motor that's the how magnetic locking occurs right after that you can increase or decrease the field current see the effect of uh, effect on the armature current to plot the vehicle of the synchronous motor thank you this was all about uh, how we can design a synchronous motor and how the magnetic locking occurs thank you